Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohen, and today I will be doing a pros and cons video for the Star Wars Expanded Universe, also known as Star Wars Legends. Uh, this is going to be one of two videos I'm making like this for Star Wars. I will also have very soon a pros and cons of canon uh, book discussion um, uh, where I'm focusing on the books. I'm not talking so much about the comics or the expanded materials or anything else. I'm mostly just talking about the book related stuff. Um, uh, so because that's what I do on the channel here. I don't really talk about the non-book stuff. Um, but uh, today I will bring three pros and three cons of the expanded universe. And I just want to have a little discussion, give some context, some my thoughts on it, and what I might consider a con, other people might consider to be a pro. Some people might like that thing. When I consider to be a pro, some people might hate and be a con. So first of all, let me say that this is just my interpretation, my understanding, my, uh, my view on this, and also understand that uh, I do enjoy both the Legends and the Canon a lot for different reasons, as I'll go into here. And so this is just me talking, uh, waxing poetic on the pros and cons of both. And so it's for today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the uh, expanding universe and legends. So let me begin. I have three pros and three, con three cons. Let me start with the pros. The first pro is I have is that the plot and the characters drive the story. For the expanded universe, they m largely had free reign. Because of uh, after Return of the Jedi ended, there were no sequel-ish era stuff going on with the movies. Um, 7, 8, 9 was not going to be coming out in the 90s. Uh, you know, Bantam Books had the opportunity to take the timeline and run with it. And so when Bantam Books took over, they were telling big stories, galaxy-spanning stories featuring the main characters, Luke, Han, Leia, Wedge, and others. And as a result, the they that really drove the concept of the EU was really driven by those books and by the major events that were happening within them. Um, uh, you know, we really got huge character arcs because we got, you know, a hundred books with Luke in them. We got like a hundred books with Leia. Now, yes, there were duds, but you, there were so many books where you really saw this beginning to end journey of the characters. And you also got new characters on top of that, such as, um, uh, like, uh, Jaina Solo and Jason Solo and Zek, I'm forgetting his last name. And, you know, you have Baron Fell and Jacket Fell and you have, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn and Admiral Pelion and others. There are such, gr and Taiko, Taiko Selchu and, oh, I, 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 Cornhorn, I, I keep going with how many great characters there are. Oh, and Marjane. Didn't, anyway, um, there are such great characters, and you see so many changes for them. Some characters are light side, they go dark side, go back to the light side. Some characters go dark side and then die. Some characters go light side and die. There are huge shifts and character moments, and they have real opportunities to go on big journeys and tell big stories. And so as the person who enjoys when a book series tells big stories the EU works really well because they were able to drive it. They had no worries that they were going to run into anything. This, of course, changed a little bit with the the prequel books where um, they couldn't tell too much because George was working on the prequels. But even you read the, the prequel, uh, you know, Clone Wars era novels of the EU, they're still highly entertaining, and they're still able to tell quite a big story, just not as big as the post-Return of the Jedi EU, which had everything all to themselves. So there, even within the EU, there was a split of the type of storytelling that started to happen, especially when Del Rey took over. Um, uh, but still, even during the Del Rey era, the post-Return of the Jedi era really took off uh, in some interesting directions. So that's the first... Uh, pro I have. The second pro I have is that it is very interconnected. When you read a lot of tie-in books, there are rarely overarching stories that characters go on, and you rarely feel like the authors are fully connected. Um, with a lot of tie-in material, 
Sometimes the authors communicate and work together, but a lot of times it's just the editor who's trying to keep it all straight and the editor can't force all the authors to read everything. So the editor kind of fills them in general ideas and people run with it. As a result, you have a kind of thread that's loosely keeping the characters together, but you don't feel like it's really strong. Uh, an example that I'll give for this is the Mission Gamma books uh, for Star Trek that I recently, uh, that I'm currently reading all of them. Uh, these books written by, f you know, four different authors or groups of authors, and it feels like they had no discussions between them. The EU, not only does it feel like they had discussions between the authors, but I know that they did because the authors have talked about it. You know, you have instances of the New Jedi Order where they had entire meetings where they would sit down and discuss the future of how they were going to plot out the series. And they had multiple meetings throughout the run of the New Jedi Order series. You had Michael Stackpole calling Kevin Anderson to ask him about using characters and plot lines between their books, between I, Jedi, and the Jedi Academy trilogy. You had major things like that happening where the authors really worked to make it a cohesive continuity, and it felt like the authors were reading each other's works. Obviously, there are bad apples. Obviously, there were works where it felt like, wait, where did that come from? Crystal Scar, because you're like that that that's out of that's out of left field. But then there are other times where it really feels natural. It really feels like they work together, and I think that was more often than not. Um, and so that I think is very much a positive for it. Some people would consider that a negative because they don't want everything to be super connected. They just want to pick up a story and read it. But yeah, that's some people. That's for me. It's a positive being super connected. And here's the. The, the third pro, and it kind of goes into the plot and the characters, but it is talking about how expansive the story is. It's not just that things are happening on one planet or with one single character. It is that the events of one book have important ripple effects on other books that happen later on. You know, you can, you, there, there are big machines, there are big things happening like destruction of a planet, and that has ripple effects on everyone else and every other book that's about to come after it. Whereas in the canon, that doesn't always happen. Big things happen in a book, doesn't always affect all the other books that are coming out around the same time. And sometimes the authors work together, but it's, it's not the same. But there were events that happened in the EU that, boy, did they shift the dynamics of the EU. And it really felt large scale, not just in that the characters were driving the story, but that the characters were driving a big story. And so it just felt, it just feels when I think about the EU, because of A, how many books there were, and B, how, how huge the scope of everything was, I just get this enormous size in my head of what the EU really was, whether or not it actually is that big. And so those are the three pros that I have. But as, as with three pros, I also have three cons. Uh, there are three things about the EU that I don't think are quite as good or as, uh, uh, as helpful to it. And the first con I have is that it can be hard to jump into. Yes, there are easy places on the internet to go where they say, oh, just, just read the Heir to the Empire trilogy as their start, starting point. Or they'll say, oh, go read the, the Darth Bane trilogy. Or, oh, read Darth Plagueis. Like, they have simple jumping points, which is good. That's good. But it's after those jumping points. It's hard for people to know, okay, do I go straight from uh, this book into this book? Uh, you know, yes, there are books that were written in the continuity uh, uh, in chronological order, but there are some books where it happens out of order or they were released out of order. And if you read one before the other, it's going to spoil your your enjoyment of those books. Um, uh, or if you read it in the proper order, it's going to really enhance it. And it's hard to know, unless you're really good at navigating this type of stuff, what to read when. This is a big problem that the Star Trek post-Nemesis books also dealt with, is that it, because they didn't use a good timeline, there is a good timeline in the EU Legends books, but it is so massive it's hard to manage everything and it's hard to know what leads to what same thing with star trek there was no single timeline that they used and so it got really confusing uh trying to understand where you should jump in and things and 
that makes it harder for a casual reader to get into the books other than standalone novels. If they want to get into series, it's hard to know when to jump in. I love the New Jedi Order series. I would never suggest that as the first series. I have like five other books and series that I would recommend you read first because I think that it's important to get the context because what makes the New Jedi Order so good is how it deals with the characters who have already previously been established. So you have uh, the difficulty of jumping in, which I think the canon doesn't really have that same difficulty, and I'll get into that in my canon video. Uh, Here's my second uh, con, is that it can get too long. Sometimes some trilogies are perfectly paced. I'll say the uh, Heir to the Empire trilogy, perfect at three books. Masterfully act one, act two, act three. Masterfully done. You also have, you know, multi-book series uh, like the X-Wing series. We have four books and then three books and then a bunch of standalones. Those worked really well. They never overstayed their welcome. The series individually worked really well. X-Wing books really worked really well. The Darth Bane trilogy is another one that I think worked really well. As much as I love The New Jedi Order and really enjoyed reading it, it overstayed its welcome. It felt a little bit too long at the end. It felt like, okay, we get it. The Vong are bad. There are complex decisions. Let's get past this. There, it was a long road to get there. 19 novels is, is really tough to, to, to read all of them and to convince your readers to stick with all of them. I think most of them, if not all of them, were New York Times bestsellers, but still, it is hard to keep the audience engaged for that long. I mean, there's these books are longer the, in, the, in this analogy, but the Wheel of Time books, it's whenever I talk about the Wheel of Time, people are like, oh, that seems interesting. Then they find out how many books there are, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's hard to, uh, to keep your readers if... It's such a huge series. And I'll say, I do not think, after reading The Legacy of the Force, I don't think it needed to be nine books. It makes sense why they did it. Nine books, with each author getting three books, one author getting the first books in the trilogies, one author getting the middle books, one author getting the last books. It made sense. But I think they could have trimmed it down if they hadn't been so insistent on giving each author three books. I think it could have been five books. And they could have rearranged the pieces, and I think it would have been a much better pace and more entertaining for the reader. Um, And I think that there are arcs that just take a little bit too long. It takes Luke way too long to end up with who he's supposed to end up with. And you have to read so many books in the Bantam era of him with so many uh, various romances that just is frustrating to read. Uh, And there are so many books with Jason and Jaina, and I enjoy the Young Jedi Knight series, but even that series gets a little bit long in the tooth at times. And so uh, the, the, the length of the series is, is, is a con, I think, in, in some ways. Now, eventually the canon's going to get to the point where they have 150 uh, books or 200 books or however many. They're going to get to that point where they're really long too, and they're going to start to experience the same issues. But so far, the canon's handled it in a different way, which, again, I'll get into in that video. And my third con... I think is the one that's probably going to get me the most flack from people. But I think that the EU has such a high pedestal that it's put upon. The EU, depending on who you ask, you they, people either really regard it highly as this is from on high, from George Lucas himself, it's the official Star Wars for them. And then you ask other people who don't have that same feeling and they say oh well it's just it's trash it's it wasn't it wasn't well produced or anything and i have heard both comments uh from from readers and reviewers and to me it works as an entertaining continuity and i really appreciate it and there's certain things within the continuity that make ooh i could see why that happened at this time in star wars you know in the 2000s there was a character named Hmm happening in the movies, and George didn't want that character to, uh, uh, to, to be confused with another character with the same name. So they had to kind of get rid of that character. And, and so sometimes he stepped in, but sometimes he didn't. And to me, it, if, if you just enjoy it as reading a continuity, as reading books, you're, you're, you're going to have fun with it. You're not going to put it on too high a pedestal but you're also not going to put on a too low one. It's just an entertaining continuity. 
And while I also enjoy the canon in the same way, I have to view that there's the potential that the canon will get overridden in the next 30 to 40 years. Now, I think the canon, the way it's designed, is going to last a little bit longer than the EU did, but still, it's probably also not going to be forever. It's probably going to be overridden. And to me, that's okay, but because of that pedestal, there are some people I know who are so adamant that they refuse to read anything from anything else, whether it's canon or a non-canon book, if it's anything that's not Legends or, or, or Expanded Universe, they just say, I won't do it. For one, you're missing so much good good books, but two, it limits you that you'll only ever have this small amount. It's like me saying, I won't read any other fantasy books because I got The Will of Time, which is my favorite fantasy series. I don't want to read anything else. There's so many other good books out there. You have to be willing to expand and to read more. And for me, the whole point of reading a book is to lead me to read another book. It is to expand the reading. It is the reason I, why the expanded universe is called the expanded universe. You're supposed to be constantly learning more and reading more. And the idea is that you're constantly wanting to expand and reach out. And so when people are refuse to, to read any new type of book because it, because they view the Legends line as the only good line or the, only, or the Expanded Universe as the one true line, they're missing out on so much. And it, for me, it puts a damper on the Legends line because it taints it with what the fandom's taken with it. And if you only want to read the Legends line, I understand that. Because I have friends and family who don't want to read anything in the canon. So I understand for the place where you're coming from. But for me... It's so much more fun to read everything because I love getting a new Star Wars book. I just read a new Star Wars book yesterday and it was absolutely fantastic. It was such a blast to read and it felt like I was watching the movies again. Now, whether that book comes from Legends or Canon, it was still lots of fun. So that's, that's why Legends can sometimes be tainted with that. And again, yes, I had three pros and three cons, so I did hit Legends on a few things. But again, remember... I love Legends. I think I, I really enjoyed it. I've read much more Legends than canon because there's much more of it. And there are some Legends books that I absolutely love more than any canon. For example, my favorite Star Wars book, canon or Legends, is Kenobi by John Jackson Miller, which is a Legends book. So I do love the Legends. I just have these few cons with it. And again, my next video is going to be on canon. I have four pros and four cons of canon. And... In that video, I'm going to hit the cannon on some stuff that I really think they're doing poorly. I'm also going to praise the cannon for a lot of things that I think it's doing better than the Legends line did. So there are pros and cons to both, but my view on both is let's enjoy it. Let's have a lot of, let's have a fun time with this. So those are my, that's my analysis on how I view the pros and cons of Legends. If you have any pros and cons of Legends, let me know in the comments section below. Please be respectful uh, in the comments. I, I do not want to start any fights. I just want to have a fun conversation about this. But please let me know your thoughts down below. And please subscribe to the channel for more Star Wars and other book-related videos. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.